Okay, well, welcome everyone to the launch party for Libby the Lobivia Jajoyera. I've had a lot of practice saying that word now, so I can do it without stumbling over it. Um, it is a mouthful, but that's kind of the point, and you'll learn that as we talk more about the book. Uh, it is about a cactus plant named Libby, and uh, she has uh, self-esteem issues, and uh, she needs to learn to overcome them and to make friends. So we're going to be sharing a bit from the book today, uh, doing a live reading. We're also going to be introducing everybody in just a second. We've got the authors here, the artist, uh, voice actor, and uh, a, a special guest star, a guest uh, speaker as well. <laughs> sure you can guess it's the screen with all the cactuses or cacti, I guess would be the proper <laughs> way to say it. Um, and of course myself, uh, I'm the publisher so uh, I, was, I guess I'll just start by introducing everybody. Uh, we've got the authors uh, over here. We got Reagan uh, McCauley. Tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself, Reagan. I'm Reagan W. H. McCauley on my books, uh, and this will be my sixth picture book, Libby the Libby Via Jajoyana. And I also have a couple of books with, uh, also with Mirror World Publishing, Mixter Twizzles Breakfast, and Beverly Bees the Brown Burmese. Um, yeah, I. I do a lot of writing. I'm also a canine and feline massage therapist. And I also have uh, produced, directed, and uh, written, of course, uh, theater and uh, film productions. So um, my career is wild and wacky and all over the place. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, and then Kevin Risk. Hi, uh, I'm Kevin. I'm I'm married to Reagan. Um, <laughs> uh, this this is uh, actually my first children's book. Uh, I used to write quite a bit. I haven't been writing quite so much lately. Um, but um, I my my life life often takes a turn, and um, I, I wound up exploring uh, various career options, including teaching English, which was uh, a very, very interesting job. And these days, I actually work as a, a media librarian, so I work a lot with metadata and semantics. Mm. And uh, we also have the illustrator here, which is Gordon Bagshaw. Yep, that's me. I'm Gord. Uh, I'm a Canadian, but I'm actually living uh, in Sao Paulo. So uh, hello from Sao Paulo, which is actually very, very hot today. Uh, we are going through a major heat wave, actually, guys. It's pretty crazy. Um, uh, tomorrow is supposed to be the hottest day on record, but enough of that. Uh, I am, um, I am, a, well, I'm the artist of the book. Um, this is my second children's book. My, the first one I had done was uh, called Sleepy Time for Mammals. It was written by Sarah Elvidge, uh, and that was a, a great joy. Uh, I'm also a cartoonist. My, my cartoon is, uh, my, my comic strip, I should say, is Frodo the Sheltie, uh, and I have uh, three gallery books, and I believe that's part of the giveaway package today as, uh, as well. Um, uh, and when I'm not doing that, I am teaching English, so uh, I uh, really enjoy doing that, and shout out to any of my students who happen to be here. So don't know if anyone is here from them, but very good. Oh, my if, wife has joined. <laughs> I was say, if any of Gord's students are here, give us a wave uh, in the comments. Say hi. Um, we're, we're, you know, we want this to be engaging. We do want you to be able to talk with us. It's not just us announcing <laughs> to you. <laughs> so that's part of it. <laughs> uh, my name is Justine Ali Dowsett. I am the owner of Mirror World Publishing and the publisher for this book. And I've had the privilege of working with these individuals over the past uh, almost year and a half. It's been a while <laughs> uh, putting this book together and we are so happy to see that it's finally in print and here and exists and that uh, you guys are all able to share it with us and to pick up your own copies for your children. So that's me. <laughs> um, uh, Mirror World Publishing, I'll tell you a bit about that real quick, is mm -hmm. we opened in 2014. So we've been around for about six years and we've got about, I think we're nearing 20 authors now um, and about 35 or so titles. And you're welcome to check those out uh, on our website or our bookstore. Uh, we also have here today, um, I'm actually gonna announce Simone first. Uh, Simone is the voice actor. Uh, for the audio version of Libby the Libivia Jajoyana, which hasn't been produced yet, but will be uh, coming soon. Uh, Simone, why don't you just tell us a bit about yourself? 
Hey, and thanks so much for having me here. So excited for Reagan. We're friends for decades now. <laughs> and um, I was able to participate and have my freelance acting career uh, through Reagan. So, you know, we yeah. had started together some years ago in our high school theater company. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, Reagan progressed and was able to create a theater company that myself and uh, several other of our fellow classmates and friends participated in over the years. Um, as Regan evolved into authorship, I was so impressed with the way that she crafted her books, always putting positive, um, positive characters and uh, principles into her books. So I'm here today as a supporter. Myself, I have a history in biology, so I especially love this book because it has to do with botany. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am also uh, an advocate for the Pan-African community, particularly in the area of education, uh, which has to do with Black history, African history, and also for our youth. So uh, just by chance, here I am to play a beautiful African violet. <laughs> 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 and we are also extremely privileged to have Tina here. Um, Tina, why don't you tell us about yourself and about the Toronto Master Gardeners? Yes, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I am a Toronto Master Gardener. Toronto Master Gardeners are a volunteer education organization. We're actually part of an international group and our purpose is to educate the public on all things gardening, all things horticultural. My particular passions are tropical plants as well as trees. I love big trees. I am a literal tree hugger. Please do. Uh, I do encourage everyone too to check out the Toronto Master Gardener website. There's so much information on there and you can ask any question you want about gardening for absolutely free, 365 days a year. Wow. Excellent. Nice. <laughs> okay, so uh, just to kick things off here, we're going to have a trivia question um, between each little bit of our presentation today so that you guys can join in the fun. Uh, so I'm going to start with our first one here. Feel free to put your answers in the chat. And after everyone's had kind of a chance to think about it, we will reveal the answer. So the very first question actually um, is, which country, and, and Tina, by the way, you can't you can't participate because you know I'm not. <laughs> which, totally not fair. <laughs> uh, which country has the most plant species? <gasps> A, <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> B, China. C, Australia. Or D, Indonesia. Ooh. <laughs> so I almost want to like, sing the Jeopardy song, but <laughs> <laughs> do people put their answers in the chat? They're yeah, just put your chat. answers down in the chat, and we've got Sabrina yeah. here from Mirror World moderating. And are people allowed to Google these, or should they like be like? Uh... Yeah, but be honest, people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't stop anybody from googling it, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think we have a unanimous uh, decision here that it is a, and you are absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the Amazon rainforest and a few other places, uh, Brazil has the greatest biodiversity of any country on the planet, with more than fifty-five thousand known species of plants, which can uh, not many of which can not be found anywhere else so no nope. wow neat <laughs> like, you guys are too smart for me and i have to make my questions harder is what i'm learning okay <laughs> so next up we're going to be doing a reading uh, of the first six pages of libby the lobivia jajoyana uh oh. starring reagan and simone so take it away guys letting gord share his screen so that people can follow along <laughs> There we go. A cactus plant named Libby lived on the windowsill of Abigail's sun-filled country kitchen. Libby's plant name was Libivia Jajoyana. Libby thought that a weird looking plant such as herself shouldn't have a name that called too much attention. Libby felt best when Abigail called her Libby. The kitchen window overlooked Abigail's garden. The garden was full of all kinds of beautiful plants with pretty leaves and colorful flowers. Not one of them had spiky spines like Libby. Libby watched Abigail in her garden day after day. 
Abigail knelt beside each flower and gently turned over its petals in her hands. Abigail never touches me like that, thought Libby. One afternoon, Abigail came into the kitchen carrying a package. She put the parcel on the kitchen island. Abigail opened the box. Inside was a beautiful plant with leaves like velvet. She placed the plant on the windowsill next to Libby. Hello, said the new plant. I'm an African violet. What are you? Are you a porcupine? I'm not a porcupine, replied Libby. I'm a cactus plant. My name is Libby. Hmm. I thought all plants look like me, said Violet. How do you like my colorful flowers and my big soft leaves? She stretched out her blossoms and turned them this way and that so Libby could see them. Everyone stops to look at me. No one looks at me, said Libby. Not even Priya, the house cat. I don't know what a house cat is, but I'm sure she'll love me, Violet bragged. I'd like it very much if your prickles don't touch me, okay? Violet's request made Libby feel very sad. So that's the first six pages. The story <laughs> continues from there. Uh, we don't want to spoil anything for you, so that's as far as we're going to go today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that and uh, that you enjoyed Simone and Reagan's performance. Uh, bravo, look forward, bravo. Yeah, look forward to um, hearing them both during the audio version, which I believe you're putting up on YouTube, if I'm correct, eventually. <laughs> oh, we're not, yeah, we're not really, it's going to be, um, Somehow embedded in the ebook is the plan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we we will have to see how to. Put oh, it the ebook. Oh yeah, we're 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 way ahead of ourselves when we're talking. Yeah, yes, I, uh, we, we, yeah. <laughs> but that that is the plan for the audio. Um, we can also possibly do, as you suggested, some uh, sort of their uh, Justine YouTube, um, like a reading of it or something like that. Right. Yeah. That might yeah. Be so there well, are several discussion. Well, we'll definitely yeah. let you know when that uh, plans are for that are finalized. Um, <laughs> if, if you want to subscribe to either Reagan, uh, Reagan's newsletter or Mirror World Publishing's newsletter or their blog or our blog, I should say, um, that information will, will show up there eventually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we do have another trivia question uh, for you. All right. Uh, what is the world's tallest tree? Is it A, the yellow Moranti? B, the California Redwood, C, Mountain Ash, or D, the Giant Sequoia? We have one guess. Well, we've got uh, one for Redwood, two for the Sequoia. At least we've got some variety this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Okay. Wait, no, yeah. I said most people are guessing D. So, all right, let's see. The answer is the California Redwood. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been nicknamed the Hyperion by scientists. It stands 115 uh, feet, or sorry, meters or 379 feet tall and is estimated to be 600 years old. Wow. <laughs> here, I thought, here I thought it was a giveaway with the giant sequoia. I was like, well, it must yeah, be that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's no. the... It's just a wannabe. Yeah, it's the red herring. <laughs> okay, um, unfortunately, we are going to have to say an early goodbye to Simone. She couldn't stay for the whole thing. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us, Simone, and your, your voice acting is lovely. <laughs> very nice. Thanks for joining Good us. You, Simone. Good to see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so now we have Tina, who is our guest speaker for today, and she's prepared a five minute or so uh, presentation for us with some slides. So we're going to give the floor over to Tina. Thank you very, very much. So you've seen the beautiful illustrations. All I can do is provide you with a couple of photographs. And here we have a picture of both Libby and of Violet with their official names. We've heard of Libivia jejoniana. And Violet's name is actually 
St. Paulia. Okay. Let's see. There we go. So it's really important to find out where Libby and Violet's family come from. Libby's family comes from the mountains of northern Argentina and southern Bolivia, which if you look at the spelling of Lobivia, it's actually an anagram of Bolivia, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so Libby's native habitat is warm and sunny with very little rain. The average rainfall is about 689 millimeters, but it doesn't fall consistently over the course of the year. It kind of all falls at once. So in the wintertime, it gets like three millimeters and in the summer, all of the rest. The landscape, as you can see, is really brown, except for the beautiful flowers and really rocky. The plants are small and scrubby and the evenings get quite, quite cool. So there's a great dif difference in temperature between daytime and nighttime. And there's not a lot of nutrition in the rocky soil. So henceforth, not a lot of plants. Violet's native habitat, by contrast, mm -hmm. is very different. Um, she, her ancestors grow in Africa, in the mountains of Kenya and Tanzania. She is African, but however, not a true violet. The name violet came from her color and the fact that she does look similar to the violets that people know in Europe and that we know here in Canada. The mountains are absolutely covered in vegetation. You can see how lush and how green and how moist it is. So there's lots and lots of rotting plant debris and lots and lots of nutrition for plants to grow. Um, Violet has big, soft, hairy leaves, as we heard from Simone, that catch the rain and the moisture from the atmosphere. The big leaves also are there to catch as much light as they can through the rainforest kind of canopy. So the bigger it are, the more surface area and the more uh, light it will get. So why is it important to know their native habitat? It's really important to know that so that we know how to treat them when they come into our homes because we want them to be happy and we want them to grow and we want them to be successful. So Libby needs rocky soil that drains really fast. She needs hot sunny days and cool nights. Violet on the other hand, she needs a more moist soil that holds water a lot longer, a little bit less sun because she's used to being under trees and not so much of a temperature change as Libby does. So both of these plants will only flower when they get what they need. So the cactus really needs that temperature change and the fast draining soil and the African violet needs not so much light. Henceforth too, African violet also flowers a lot more often than the cactus do. Every single plant is unique and it's evolved to have very unique things. So Violet is unique because she does adapt so well to our homes. She grows pretty much without complaint as long as you give her enough sun and keep her constantly watered. Because she produces a lot of flowers, she also produces a lot of seeds. And when NASA wanted to do experiments to see what plants did, how they grew differently in space, they actually brought African violet seeds. And they came up with some startling conclusions when they brought the African violets back to Earth, um, they grew almost double the size of regular African violets and they grew double the amount of flowers. So there's actually a whole series of African violets, starting with the name Ever, um, that you can now buy that actually came from you outer space. Uh, or ancestors. So cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Libby is very, very unique. Cactus are very, very, very unique plants and have evolved to live and survive and thrive in very, very difficult situations like the desert. So what is special about a cactus? Um, actually, a long time ago, way, way back by dinosaur times, cactuses would have had leaves, just like every other plant. But over the course of evolution, when they got exposed to the environment that was so dry, the leaves actually turned into spines. And the spines are very, very helpful to the plant in terms of keeping it uh, surviving successfully. 
So the spines actually can catch the water, the little drips of water that sometimes come, and slowly drop them into the soil directly underneath to the roots. Um, they actually provide a little bit of shade, which is amazing. And what they really do is protect the plant from all the other animals that want to eat it. Because if you're a desert animal, you're looking for water. And a nice green cactus looks like a really good treat, but the spines protect it from being eaten. So it does survive very, very well. Um, the surface, as you can see, is also wrinkly and ribbed so that when um, it starts to dry up like a sponge, it's really, it gets wrinkly and tight. But when it does rain, it can puff right out like a sponge, almost to being smooth. So that's another good thing that it does. Um, the roots of the cactus are not so deep as they are wide. Because of course, if you've got roots all along the surface of the soil and it rains, you're gonna collect much more rain than if it goes deep down and you have to wait for the water to sink down because it's not going to do that in the desert. Um, a lot of plants too, well, all plants want to be pollinated. And they are also very clever in that a lot of cactus flowers only bloom at night because in the desert, most of the pollinators only come out at night because it's cool. So cactus have evolved over many, many, many millennium to be very smart and to be one of the few plants that can survive in such an adverse uh, environment. You can have your very own Libby or Violet, you can give them any name you like, JJ or Paula, something like that. Um, most of them now are grown in nurseries. In fact, a lot of them in their native habitats have become close to being extinct. So it is not advisable to ever collect plants from the wild. They should be only bought from uh, legitimate nurseries. So you can buy them already grown or it's very, very easy actually to grow cactus from seed. And it's a wonderful winter project, uh, very easy to start. And if you wanna know details on that, ask the Toronto Master Gardeners on the website. We'd be delighted to tell you. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that I've told you a little bit about both plants and encourage you to take your very own house plant. Terrific. Very nice. <laughs> hey, can, can we Thank put can we put uh, her her website in the in the comment section? Yep, uh, we will do that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> we will do that. Very good. So thank you very much, Tina. That was really informative and uh, really, I learned a lot. <laughs> I don't know tons about plants, but <laughs> yeah, uh, we've we've got it here. All right, so we're putting the link down there in the chat if anybody wants it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Look forward to hearing from everybody. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> okay, so we're going to ask another trivia question now that we've learned so much about plants. <laughs> All right. Um, what, oh, sorry, which carnivorous plant can digest not only insects, but lizards, amphibians, and even small mammals? A, the Portuguese sundew. B, the cobra lily. C, the Venus flytrap. Or D, the tropical pitcher plant. We're getting harder and harder, are we? <laughs> <laughs> we planned it this way, Justine. Yes. <laughs> While Tina was sharing today uh, on on the the differences between the plants, I just it just made me think more and more about the the genius of your writing, you two, um, in putting in putting those two plants so di different, um, so so different uh, together on that sill. Uh, yes. Really, really well thought out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Someone said they all sound very scary. They, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer uh, is the tropical pitcher plant. Um, it, it can reach over a foot in height and the doomed animals are attracted by the plant's sweet scented nectar. And once they fall into the pitcher, the digestion can take as long as two months. Oh, Note to self, stay away from the nectar. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just want to remind anyone, everyone to, if you have questions for us, now that you've learned a little bit about the book, a bit about the creators and um, about plants in general, if you have any questions for either the authors, the artists, myself or Tina, just to leave it uh, in the chat or in the question and answer section and uh, Sabrina will get 
give us those uh, for a little bit later. So please put your questions down there. All right. Um, so we're going to announce now the winner for the prize pack. It was drawn in advance because we did the most gather most of the entries on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and everything like that. So Reagan. Okay, now I've drawn um, a, a few names in a particular order. The first name is, is the one I will announce, but this is in case I'm thinking, yeah, this person might not be here. Um, so let's see. Uh, it's Lorraine, Lorraine.laws at gmail.com. Let me just put that in the chat there. It looks like Lorraine, unless she goes by another name, is not here. Yeah, I'm thinking not. Yeah, so, we will be contacting people by email uh, to let them know that they've won. Um, well, well, but we just figured we would announce them here as well. Oh, uh, no, they have to be here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they do. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go to the next name. Uh, okay. Well, but if, if, if Lorraine, yeah, like, is he going by another name? I'm assuming you're not here. Um, so the next name is Debbie Galloping Spirit 56 at yahoo.com. But I'm thinking perhaps you're not here either. So. <laughs> Do you have like a super ton of people on that list of yours? Because we've, yeah. we've got about 15 attendees. So yeah. trying to find one might take you some time. <laughs> yeah. Can you open up that? Just right there. No, on the participants? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we've got a list of the participants here. Um, so we could pick one from there. That would be probably simpler. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to give me a number between 1 and 15, <laughs> and then we will just grab it. Um, am I giving you a number? Yeah, pick a number. I am. You can't see them, so. Yeah, seven. <laughs> okay. Seven. Uh, drum roll. There you go. Oh, Ooh, uh, Momsy <laughs> is our winner. Okay, I'm going to have to pick that again. Not <laughs> Let's try. Let's try ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your next number? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, this, Sarah this Graham. A, oh, don't know. Also, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pick one in a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Maybe you should, Justine. Maybe you should. Okay. <laughs> All right, we've got Raquel Silva. Does anybody know that person? Or are we good? <laughs> oh, I think I know that person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, she, she sounds kind of familiar to me. Yeah, that's uh, that's Gord's wife. <laughs> Is it okay for her to win? So, can I can I make a suggestion? Yes, if I may. The original. <laughs> sorry to all those who no, just got I'm picked, here. but you're all probably going. Oh, oh. I won! I won! Oh. Nope. Uh, so, so here's my suggestion. The yeah. people that you Gailed. originally, the people you originally picked, mm -hmm. I think we should contact those people. That and let them good. know that they won. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So actually, but can you announce them publicly so we have it on record and yeah, uh, all that? Lorraine. La Lorraine, that's right. Lorraine okay. Laws at Gmail. We'll, st we'll stick with Lorraine Laws. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that for the confusion, guys. <laughs> uh, so I will ask another trivia question just to. <laughs> Congratulations, Lorraine, wherever right. you are in the world. Yes. So what is the fastest growing plant? A, eucalyptus, B, bamboo, C, algae, or D, duckweed? Please put your guesses uh, in the chat there. <laughs> There's a plant called duckweed? <laughs> so we've got two votes for algae so far. Oh, three votes for algae. Like, did botanists just run out of ideas for names? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to call Four this one for algae. I have bad news for you guys. It's bamboo. Bamboo. <laughs> uh, some species of bamboo can apparently grow as much as 35 inches in a single day. Mm. So. Yeah, bamboo grows. We have a lot of bamboo actually in Brazil. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's quite an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to do our Q&A now. Uh, and uh, the first question we have here is from, I don't want to pronounce the name wrong, De Deirdre? 
um, Reagan. How did you come to pick Libby as the main character? And do you have uh, a, a Libby plant? <laughs> I do not have a Libby plant yet. I am. I'm. I will get one. I think supports <laughs> cactus in the background of his, his screen. But that's not. A, that's not a Libby. No, no. Libby. Uh, yeah. But uh, that that is the plan someday. And um, you should all know that we started this book, the idea for it, back in the early two thousands. Um, and I am not sure if I remember <laughs> why <laughs> uh, I picked La Bibia Jajoyana. Um, I, I know it had to, uh, had to do with an internet search that I did, um, just looking into cacti. And I, I believe I picked based on uh, appearance, so, you know, basically somewhat, somebody who would, who would suit the role um, <laughs> in this book, especially pre-blossom and post-blossom, basically. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for us? I think that's the only one that's come in so far from the attendees, but if anyone has any other questions, please put it in the comments and we will get to it. Um, I will, I guess, just ask one of the ones that we prepared in advance, just in case. Um, so we have a question for Tina. Uh, we wanted to know a little bit about your personal collection of, of cacti. Uh, what can you tell us about them? Well, I, anytime I see a different cactus, I pick one up. So I do have quite a variety. Uh, I also have quite a variety of succulents, which are part of the cactus family. It's actually the other way around. Cactus are succulents, but succulents aren't necessarily cactus. So anything that's different and attracts my eye, I will pick. So I have a lovely fishbone cactus. You can that's see nice. by the shape that of the leaves. Funny. That's why they call it fishbone. And a lot of ones that I actually have started from seed that are quite, quite tiny, but very, they're actually <laughs> quite amazing. And the, the texture in the spines and the patterns that it make are just so fascinating. Amazing. So I do have quite a different, uh, quite an extensive collection, rat tail cactus. They all have, we should all be using the botanical names because there's about four different plants called rat tail. <laughs> I also, I grow lots of other things, orchids and African violets and whatever's just different and exotic. <laughs> and I noticed your white. <laughs> yeah, your your African violets are are white. Is that common or? Well, <clears throat> I went to one of the events of the African Violet Society, and they will sell you leaves. It's very easy to start African violets from a leaf. Mm -hmm. And I had no white ones in my collection, so I chose white. And these just happened to be the first ones that came into flower. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so a question for the authors. Uh, this is about when you were in the submission process uh, for Libby and, and your other books as well. Um, someone, Linda wants to know, uh, did you receive many rejections or what was that process like trying to get Libby published? Um, I, I can't remember how many rejections that Libby got, but it wasn't a super big number. Um, uh, but it, it took many years, uh, very much on and off, uh, of, of honing um, with many different beta readers. Um, some were editors, some were publishers, actually, uh, that we worked with um, who were, you know, were not necessarily going to publish but gave us notes. Um, and some were um, just parents and even even um, somebody's uh, son, I seem to remember, a uh, little boy. And uh, yeah, so that one, it, it didn't receive many, many rejections, but uh, oddly enough, it was actually with a different publisher for a little while. And uh, when, when Gord had, well, actually, um, Gord had been on board for, for a, a while, um, but we, we tried with one publisher first and it wasn't, we were just not sure it was quite the right fit, basically, which, you know, happens. And uh, I had already been working with Justine and thought, oh, this really, you know, the way that Mirror World Publishing works, um, the, the book will really, really flourish here, uh, really blossom, if you will. <laughs> nice choice of words. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that answer, I think. Did you have Somebody is saying that they lost audio, our friend, uh, Kelly said that, that she's You can always audio. try logging out and logging back in. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. that works. 
Oh, I mm -hmm. guess we'll have to share that with in the <laughs> in the chat, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. True, true, Sabrina. <laughs> um, so if in in while we're kind of waiting for for Kelly to come back, if anybody else has any questions they still want to ask us, uh, if you have a question for the artist Gordon or for myself, the publisher, or Tina or the art or the authors, um, please put it in the chat below so we can get to that. Um, I will ask a question quickly of Gord. Uh, Gord, can you tell us a bit about why you chose the digital style for this book and if you think that affected it at all? <clears throat> uh, well, I, I, um, I'm, I'm really comfortable with the digital uh, environment. It's been uh, something I've been doing for a number of years, ever since I started doing Pro to the Sheltie uh, and Vector. <clears throat> what was new for me in this case was adding a three, uh, 3D, 3D, uh, three dimensional uh, computer uh, environment, which was different. And it certainly, I think for me, it made a big difference. Um, <clears throat> what was important to me was to create some kind of dynamic um, that I think would have been lost if I had done it in the traditional way by, by drawing, um, <clears throat> especially dealing with Vector. When I was creating uh, Libby, um, and her, her uh, spines, um, they, in my mind, they needed to be always consistent. Doing it all in vector enabled me to um, uh, manipulate. Like I built, it's like you can build her in vector, and then with that, I'm able to move her. I can shift. And so in the end, I'm, I'm, not, I'm less drawing, and I'm actually starting to mold and play with her a little bit. So it kind of... Um, made her come to life in a different way uh, for me in that process. And uh, so, yeah, all the characters, all the flowers are vector. Uh, so I was able to, to move and hopefully one day when we do that, uh, when we do that other version of the book, there'll be maybe some movement <laughs> a little <Yes>. bit. <laughs> but that's uh, for another time. Yeah, yeah, but that, that was a big part of it. Um, so, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We've got a question from Shauna. Uh, it says, Reagan, do you have any ideas for future books or are there any other books that are in the pipeline? Yeah. Um, next year, um, spring, I believe, I, I will be um, uh, releasing a book called Dog Band, uh, which sort of combines different kinds of pets and music different kinds of music together, weirdly, in another picture book. Um, that's with Iguana Books. Uh, and again, that should be spring 2021. Uh, the illustrator for that is Wei Lu, the same illustrator as Mixed Room's Breakfast. Yeah, yeah, she's great. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that. And I also recently um, just found a home, I'll say, with a publisher called uh, Pandemonium Publishing for my middle grade novel series, I hope. They've taken book one anyway. Um, Peter Little Wing is what it's called. And Gord will be providing illustrations for that. Even though it's a novel, there will be some illustrations in it. It is a children's book after all. I mean, you know, don't we all love art? Anyway, so uh, yep, those are those are coming down the pipeline. I also have some books, uh, uh, picture books in the works um, that have not been officially picked up yet. Um, including a book about a parrot um, that, <laughs> without feathers, basically, uh, a rescue parrot. And that's to go along with um, a, a sort of a series of books that started with Tamara Turtle's Life So Far, a book about uh, rescue turtles. So there'll be another book about a different kind of rescue animal in that series. And then after that, there'll be another one. I just haven't determined what pet for sure might be a ferret. Um, yeah, so that's that's about it for what I'm able to reveal at the moment. So you know. <laughs> it's quite the collection. Yeah. Um, imagination. <laughs> wow. Uh. Staying busy. Yes. Uh, another question from Linda um, for both authors. Uh, how do you find beta readers that you trust to read your early copies? Uh, you should stay say things. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember how we found the beta readers for uh, for Libby. Um, it's uh, I mean, with previous stories and things that I've done, Reagan was always one of my beta readers, and um, and vice versa. Yeah, and um, 
I, I suppose I always looked for a person, um, one who would be nearby and willing to read any uh, anything that I wrote. That's key. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, somebody with whom I had a little bit of a relationship or an honest relationship, somebody I knew we could uh, talk about fiction and choices, and um, so, so I could better... I, I, I suppose I had a way of, uh, one, having an open avenue to discuss what was going on, and also it was important to be able to understand where they were coming from a little bit, because, um, I mean, sometimes it's good just to get a raw reaction, like, eh, but sometimes if all you get is, eh, you don't really know what it means, yeah. so you have to be able to have that dialogue. And also um, for, for Peter Littlewing in particular, a um, couple of beta readers are from my own family and are here tonight. So I just wanted to acknowledge really quickly, Kelly and Lori, my aunts, <laughs> thank you. They, uh, uh, you know, there's been also a ton of other beta readers for Peter Littlewing. And uh, we did get some through, um, I don't even know if they're around anymore, Words Are You, I think, um, editing services um, online. Yeah. So. Uh, through them and um, yeah, other writers in our lives who are also friends like um, Allison uh, McWood is mm -hmm. a name of an author that we both worked with in a number of uh, situations. So yeah, this we find beta readers through sort of real life channels and, and connections, but also you know you can find people um, mm -hmm. through you know, writers groups and blogs and stuff online and uh, editing services and, and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like the, the last question here is, oh, okay, second last question <laughs> is for me. Um, Deidre says, uh, will Libby be available in hardcover? Uh, and the answer is Libby is currently available in paperback, which is this guy right here. Uh, and there will possibly be some sort of audio or maybe animated version that's still kind of being decided exactly what form that's going to take, yes. um, either an ebook or a video uh, of some kind. But uh, no, the paperback is the official printed version. There will not be a hardcover just because it is a children's book and you don't often find those, um, the style anyway, in, in hardcover. So this is what we're going to be sticking with. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, and we have a question for Tina from Sabrina. <laughs> uh, she says, are African violets bad for cats? And what should you do if your cat gets into uh, that or a prickly cacti? Ah, uh, my, to the best of my knowledge, African violets are not toxic to cats or pets. And I think much as was reflected in the book that uh, there won't be too many cats that go too close to a cactus, at least after they get the first nose full of spines. <laughs> um, there are certainly websites for, with, ha, that list plants that are toxic to cats because indeed some of them are. Uh, lilies in particular, Easter lilies, never have an Easter lily if you have a cat because they will immediately shut down the cat's kidneys just by the nibble of a leaf. <laughs> So you are very wise to be careful if you have pets to decide what kind of plants you want. If I may interject here a little bit, uh, that is actually a really cool question. Now, I'm not a botanist, but uh, Reagan and I and, and Kevin, when we were discussing partway through the book, we were actually discussing, wait a minute, Abigail, the gardener, has a cat. And we were thinking about what kind of plants would a, would a gardener who also loves her cat what kind of plants would she have? So my sister, Lori, who's also works a lot with plants, uh, I had a lot of discussions with her. And from that, uh, you'll notice in that garden scene that we saw, all those plants are actually uh, cat friendly on purpose. So yeah, there's actually, that. there's even cat, there's even cat there. Yeah, there's cat so. flowers in the garden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, actually, Oh, sorry. Amazing attention to details, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, I think um, Gord Hude asked uh, us at some point or other um, what made us choose Violet. Um, was that it was, yeah, that was, I was really curious about why you, I mean, when you think of all of the possible uh, plants that could have been put beside Libby, um, and, and I have sort of, I think some of it got answered through yeah. Tina's presentation because I was thinking, ah, I think, I think I know, but I still want to hear from, from both of you. How did you both decide on Violet being her, uh, her partner on the sill? 
there's an additional and more important reason that Tina has actually already covered tonight as well. And that is we, fr uh, we first picked azaleas, an azalea. Oh. And that is not a safe plant for cats. Yeah. And that is why, so we went looking for a plant that was safe for a cat to, as you'll see later in the book, I'll just leave it there, actually. <laughs> no spoiler alert here. Right? It's a wise choice because azaleas do not last long in the house. No, no, that too. They don't, they don't enjoy being in the house, so you made a wise choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna ask another trivia question now. Uh, let's see if okay. I've got two to choose from, so which one do I like better? <laughs> that one's plain. Okay, I'm gonna go with the second one. Uh, what does the world's tallest flower smell like? A, ammonia, B, peanut butter, C, rotting Ooh. meat, or D, buttered popcorn? If it's peanut butter, can you please tell me where to find it? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure it's not, because that would just be too nice. <laughs> it's just not, not how it works. In so we got any guesses? Any guesses at all? What the tallest flower in the world smells like? I think I have a guess. I'm just going to put it in. I know what it is. <laughs> not because I have the questions here. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> it's actually a really cool flower. <laughs> Anybody? Oh, it looks like someone guess. is saying C. Someone All right, well, C. I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll save you from the suspense and answer the question. Uh, <laughs> the flower of the Titan Arum, apparently, um, is the largest unbranched flower in the world and can reach up to 15 feet tall, and the bloom produces a smell like that of rotting meat, yeah. giving nice. it the common name of corpse flower. Corpse flower. Oh, there have been a couple of those bloom, one in Niagara um, Parks a couple of years ago, I think one in Ottawa, and I think the Toronto Botanical Garden, what Alan they... Gardens has one, but it hasn't bloomed. And they are quite, you cannot open the door and not, like the smell is just atrocious. <laughs> Wow. I, I thought the Toronto Zoo recently had one bloom. Like, yes, very... you're right. That's who I was thinking of. Toronto <laughs> Zoo. Okay, yeah, yeah. Gross. I knew she would know all the answers. Toronto Zoo. That's awesome. That's the flower that only blooms once, once in its lifetime, right? And it, once a century. Well, no. There is a century plant. That's a different kind of. Oh, okay. Plant. Smelly. It does only. It, it blooms every couple of years. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it only lasts, the flower lasts for maybe a week or two. Right. And then takes that long again to flower. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, we <laughs> want to thank everyone for coming uh, and for joining us for the celebration of Libby. And uh, we just want to ask you if you could uh, to share the word um, about the launch of Libby, the Libby of Jajoyana, and the fact that the book is now available for sale worldwide. Uh, you can order it from us at mirrorworldpublishing.com. Uh, we'll toss the link for the store down in the chat. Uh, you can also order it wherever you would order books. So if you're an Amazon shopper, or if you'd rather go to Chapters or Barnes & Noble or, or whatever stores in your, <laughs> your area, uh, they can order it. Even your local small bookstore, you can go in and ask for it. And if they have access to distribution, they can order a copy. And if they don't, they can always call us up and we can ship one to them. So um, the book is available everywhere. Uh, that being said, uh, we also wanted to let you know as a thank you from Mirror World for attending that you do get a free uh, ebook. You can download any of the ebooks from our store and try Mirror World for free. Uh, the discount code is thank you, all one word, all caps. So just the word thank you. Uh, so we'll put the link for the store. You can browse all of our 35 titles and pick which one you'd like. Just put that discount code in at the checkout and it'll make it free for you and we'll send that out. So thank you again for coming. Also, and thank one, you to Tina. Just, just one note also, just uh, uh, Ray, Reagan and I, if, uh, if you want, Reagan and I are going to have a, a session together on yeah. Saturday, correct? Yes, that's right. Saturday. What Actually. time will that be at? On Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, yeah, I, I will be going live on Facebook on Mirror World Publishing's page with Gord to oh, yeah. chat about the book. I'm also doing this with other guests on different days. I have a pre-recorded uh, one for with Kevin, 
we've already done. Uh, I will be posting it tomorrow, uh, again, on Mirror World Publishing's page, and I'll share it out, of course, to my other pages and things. Uh, then I'll be speaking with Justine at 7 p.m. on Sunday the 4th. And then with uh, a parent and women's business coach, Kelsey Matheson, on October 5th, Monday, at 3 p.m. And then I'll be speaking with Tina again uh, for a little longer this time uh, on October 6th at 3 p.m. And then I have another pre-recorded session with uh, confidence coach Rachel Smets. Uh, we'll be talking about the book on, uh, well, we've, we've pre-recorded it, but I will post it on October 7th at approximately noon or so. And I'm going to get into, I love that you're doing that. You're going to have a session with the confidence coach because it's such a big theme in the book. It was really so, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Info. Yeah. 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 Uh, so there will be content for Libby all week long and not only the live interviews on Facebook with uh, Reagan and her guests, but there will also be blog posts celebrating Libby all week long. There's a blog tour happening. Uh, you can go on to Mirror World's blog, start there and follow it along and, and check out all the different blogs that will be posted on about three blogs a day. So uh, and yeah, <laughs> a lot of people participating, helping to spread the word. So if you can join us to help us do that, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And again, thank you everyone for coming and uh, for celebrating this launch with us. And we'll see you for our next one, which actually will be in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And that one's for? Um, sorry, yeah, my book is actually coming out in two yes. weeks. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, did, I guess I'll do a quick already... mention. Yeah, uh, did you raise it up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there this is go. the book here. Uh, it is the fourth in my series. It's not for kids. <laughs> this one's a <laughs> dark oh, fantasy that. romance series, so completely different genre. Um, but we started the company uh, six years ago with the first book in this series, which is called Mirror's Hope. Uh, and then every couple of years, we've launched another one. And this is the last. So the whole series is out now if you want to check that out. Um, and yeah, the launch for this is October 17th. Cool. And that'll well be on done. our Facebook page. Well done, Justine. On the thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's everything. So thank you very much, guys. Very good. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys.